Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beyond the Book. Today we're going to be looking at Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, now this one is interesting because it does have a couple of different adaptations and I don't believe I've done that yet. Normally it's only the book and the movie or the book and the TV show. Um, this one I'm going to be looking at two movies as well as the original piece of literature. So first we're going to talk a little bit about the book. Now I did not read this when I was a child. I did buy this copy um, a few weeks ago. <laughs> so, and I read it for the first time and I can honestly say I was pretty surprised at the outcome I came to um, with some of the original thoughts that I had thinking that the 2008 version would be closer to the book than the original 1971 version. Um, I do want to say I was wrong, uh, but not completely wrong. So I'm going to kind of go over these in a little bit here. I can see that. Now just to cover the original book, um, I do have trouble saying the author's name, so feel free to call me out in the comments if I mispronounce it. If not, hey thanks. Um, but it's Roald Dahl um, is the original author and he actually did do the screenplay for the 1971 version as well. Um, so anyone that says that he absolutely hated that movie, he wrote the screenplay. Um, not to say he loved everything about it, he did have some issues with the aesthetics, um, but he did keep pretty close to his own piece of literature. Now for this one, um, in the book, everything stays pretty close to the same throughout. I would say the biggest difference is, um, is actually going to be the like, the films add more where there's not really any, you know, mention of things in here. Um, which is fine, you know, that's what they do to a movie, it's a small children's book, so they need to beef it up a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry, rules of the house. I would say one of the biggest differences that I was actually really surprised about in the book, just having grown up with the 1971 film and then seeing it done again in the 2008 film, would be the Oompa Loompas. Now the Oompa Loompas in the book are actually small blonde people. Um, they are supposed to be about two feet tall in total. Um, so the 2005 film does that really well, keeping them very small, um, but they're kind of like really funny little characters. Like they add a lot of character to the book. They don't speak English. Um, they like run around in little deer skins and like uh, leaf dresses and things and they bang on drums. They're a lot more active in the story than just showing up to sing a song to take the naughty children away. Um, so I would say that's one of the biggest differences there. Um, it's just the inclusion of the Oompa Loompas throughout the entire story. And also including female Oompa Loompas, which we don't see in either film. They're all male Oompa Loompas, um, which isn't necessarily like a, you know, hit on those movies or anything like that. Um, it just is what it is. At the end of the day, they weren't really active in those films. They were just kind of there. Um, so for this one in the book, I just think that was a nice little detail that, um, you know, there were whole families of Oompa Loompas, you know, females, males, children, the whole nine yards. Granted, I'm very glad they didn't add the kids in the movies because the kids do run around the chocolate factory nude. Um, so I'm really glad that they, they were excluded from, from both movies because that would be traumatizing. Um, Aren't they delightful? Aren't they trauma? Now, also, one thing that I want to say the newer movie kind of doesn't quite stand up to the book and the original is going to be the ending. Um, now, again, for anyone that who hasn't seen uh, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or read the book, I'm not really sure why you're watching the video, but hey, thanks. Um, <laughs> oh, well, I'll get it right in the end. Uh, the story is basically you have a really poor child, Charlie, who is dreaming of going into this chocolate factory um, that Willy Wonka owns. Willy Wonka ends up sending out five golden tickets inside candy bars and five the five children that find them can come visit the factory and there's going to be a grand winner at the end and that's pretty much charlie and the chocolate factory so they go through the factory um four of those five children are naughty they don't listen they are greedy uh etc etc they're just bad kids so they kind of get what's coming to them in a way that reflects who they are as people so you have Augustus Gloop who turns into like a little chocolate boy. <laughs> um, you have my TV that gets shrunk down to the size of a, you know, a person on TV. Veruca Salt who's spoiled, rotten, gets tossed down the garbage chute. 
um, you know, etc, etc, etc. Now, towards the end of the film, um, well, towards the end of the, the end of the book actually is taking place in the glass elevator where Charlie and uh, Grandpa Joe are in the elevator with Willy Wonka and, you know, he tells them, I'm giving you my chocolate factory. And Charlie's like, what? This is crazy. You know, can my family come? And Willy Wonka is basically like, I wouldn't have it any other way. Like, of course your family's going to come and live at the factory. So they get there and the grandparents are immediately like, we don't want to go. And Willy Wonka's like, I got this. And he just pushes their bed onto the elevator and off to the factory they go. So and then the main thing is like, Grandma Georgina is like, is there food? We're hungry. <laughs> so um, I would say that's like... It, it kind of left a lot to the imagination for when they finally get to the factory, but there was no fight as like in the 2005 where it's like, no, your parents can't come. You, you're never allowed to see them again, um, which I think detracts a lot from those characters. So in the book, the grandparents are also fairly lucid. Um, they're old. They're all very old. They're in their 90s, but they're not like... <laughs> dragonflies <laughs> um no like they know what's going on they understand what's happening and they each have their own personality um which i think that the 1971 version does a really good job at so like grandma josephine has a few lines where she's talking to charlie she's talking talking to grandpa joe um you know the grandparents are all fairly lucid here they know what's happening they're not like dementia patients that are just stuck at home um also, in the original 1971 film, <clears throat> some of the biggest differences from the book, uh, again, the Oompa Loompas, they're like, they're orange with green hair and they're kind of dressed funny. Um, they also have the Oompa Loompa song, which <laughs> I love. Who doesn't love that song, right? Um, but it is different than how it goes down in the book. So in the book, they sing this big elaborate song, they're beating on drums, whereas here the Oompa Loompas give a quick little little ditty and then they're gone um also i think that uh some of the changes that were made from the book to the film uh were due in large part to just the technology that was available so for this film like it's 1971 there's not a whole lot that they can do um you can't actually train the squirrels to drag veruca salt off screen or you know down the garbage chute so they figured out ways around that um you know they replaced the squirrels with golden geese um, well, geese that lay golden eggs, rather, and give her this song that shows how spoiled rotten she is, and then she falls down the garbage chute. Um, so everything is very much similar to the book, which I was not expecting, um, because all I hear is how the Johnny Depp version is so much better, it's so much closer to the book, um, and then people my age are like, yeah, but this movie's better. <laughs> now, for this movie as well, I think one of the things I love the most about it is how they kept um, Willy Wonka is like a charming person. Like he's making jokes. He's cracking jokes with the parents. He's like, you know, nice to the kids, even though there are moments where he's like, don't mumble, can't hear you. And then just disregards what they say. Um, he still is like warm and welcoming. He gives more of like that childlike imaginative vibe where he's like he's very whimsical he's just a, an adult that thinks like a child but isn't mean or awkward um and that's very very similar to how he is in the book in the book he's very charming he's cracking jokes like he's not this awkward you know uncomfortable person um, I also love that they didn't change the ending. So even though you don't see Willy Wonka shoving all four grandparents still in their bed onto the elevator, um, you do have that moment where he tells Charlie, like, of course your family can come. Like, you know, this is going to be your factory. This is something for you. Like, you know, of course, bring them, bring your family. And it, it's just like that warm, you know, like the same feeling eating chocolate gives you of just like warm and fuzzies and, you know, happy. Um, whereas in the 2005 movie, they kind of add this whole side story of how Willy Wonka is really awkward with parents. He had a huge falling out with his dad when he was a child. His dad was apparently a dentist and didn't want Charlie eating sweets or chocolates. And Charlie was just like, Charlie, sorry, Willy Wonka. <laughs> Willy was just like hard no fam and then just kind of pieces out to go be a chocolatier. So he doesn't like parents, he doesn't like adults, he is very awkward, he's 
instead of him being a childlike imagination, he's just childlike. Um, so, and I think that that detracts a lot from the character, from him being a businessman. Um, because in the book and in the original film, like, he's still a businessman. He still knows how to be an adult, but think like a child. He has the imagination of a child. Whereas in here... Are you hep to the job? Can you dig what I'm laying down? I knew that you could slide me some skin. So, brother? It's just like, what? Does he have a disability? Again, nothing wrong with that. Uh, however, it's just very different from what I was expecting um, from everyone saying that this film was more like the book. Uh, now, where this does excel is all of the little details that technology allows them to do. Um, so they have the squirrels where Veruca Salt, you know, tries to take a squirrel and gets tossed down the laundry chute, the garbage chute, same thing. Who buys new socks? <laughs> um, now, it also gives a lot of detail that is in the book with just like the rooms, what the rooms look like. Um, you know, making the chocolate fountain look like chocolate instead of just brown water. Um, also, just like little details, the boat um, is pink, just like in the book it's pink, whereas in the 1971 film it's more of like a steamboat where you have two Oompa Loompas just kind of rowing in the background, whereas in the book um, and also in the 2005 movie. It's a very large Viking style boat with like hundreds of Oompa Loompas rowing. Um, there are several to, to a, you know, an oar and they're all rowing. So some of those details are just really cool to see actually happen. Um, but I don't think it made or break, you know, will make or break, you know, the movie compared to the book, mainly because of what they did to Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka is the heart and soul of this book, you know, it might be called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, um, but it is definitely Willy that is the focus and the main character. We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. So I think the choices that they made for this film and making him so incredibly awkward really hurt the similarities. Um, separately, it's still a good movie. If you watch it and you've never read the book, you've never seen the original film, it's still really well done. It's enjoyable to watch. Um, and it's, you know, again, the, the original film also put in things that weren't in the book. Um, there's a whole, like, side story where Slughorn, you know, goes to all the kids and is like, hey, bring me that never, never, you know, la everlasting gobstopper. Um, you know, Charlie and Grandpa Joe steal fizzy lifting drinks. Um, that doesn't happen in the book. Charlie follows all the rules. He's just literally happy to be there <laughs> um so it does have its own forgive me for putting you through this please forgive me unique differences um from the book but the overall tone is so much closer where like the children behave like children they don't really think like actors you know they do things that i feel like children would naturally do they're running they're jumping they're screaming they're you know asking questions they're <laughs> you know they behave like children Whereas in the 2005 version, they're all kind of stoic and awkward and um, you can definitely tell that they're actors, like they don't feel natural um, and what natural children would do. But again, I think that whole awkwardness plays off well because Willie is so awkward himself. Like the whole movie, pretty awkward in general, just with all of the characters are just very stoic, I guess. They're stoic and they're awkward. And they have their own charms in different ways, but not in the same way that they have in the book. Um, overall, I would say, even though the 2005 version um, has all those little details and nuances that are closer to the book, I would think the 1971 version is closer um, because it nails the tone. Uh, it nails the tone, the point of you know, Charlie is a child who is suffering greatly um, due to economic reasons and just life in general. And he gets lucky and he gets everything he ever dreamed of. And I feel like in the newer film, Charlie fixes his life himself. Um, you know, he doesn't want to give up his family for the chocolate factory. So Willy Wonka goes away and Charlie fixes his own life. You know, he helps his parents fix the house. Um, he gets a job and he is shining shoes and he's making money. So he's doing all of these things to make his own life better. 
um, which again, great philosophy there. Um, however, when comparing it to the original book, it kind of loses a lot for those characters that Charlie deserves it without having to fix himself first. Um, so I would say in closeness to the book, the 1971 movie is definitely way closer, um, just because of the tone and the way that the characters are presented and um, the course of the film, just a lot closer. I would say if I have to rank them in, in terms of favorite, it's going to be this movie first, um, mainly because Rose Colored Glasses. I just love it. And I love Gene Wilder. He's one of my favorite actors. Um, if you haven't already seen it, we did do a tribute to him. So I'd say go ahead, check that out if you're interested in about his life and career. Um, the second would be the book, just because it's whimsical and it's fun and I love it. And it has songs in there um, that are written down and the lyrics are hilarious. Um, they actually pick and pull certain lyrics for those film songs. Um, so you do get a little bit of a taste of what's written if you've heard the songs. Um, but it's way, way more elaborate in the book. And then finally, I would say is the 2005 film, um, simply because it's just weird. I still really love it. Don't get me wrong. I would say it's definitely like three and a half, four stars out of five, um, which is pretty good for me. Normally, I, I, you know, rarely give like a five star for, for films and stuff. So, um, I would say that's, that's pretty much it for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, a lot of nostalgia going on there. Again, you're probably going to see this book cover again, even if it's not for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, because it does have um, different books in here that I'm going to be revisiting again. The suspense is terrible. He, he's going to go this time. I hope it'll last. So we're more likely going to see uh, Roald Dahl again for James and the Giant Peach uh, that I believe Tim Burton also directed that film. So that's going to be really interesting to see uh, the comparison there because he did direct this one. So it's going to be, um, it's definitely going to be a journey. <laughs> So comment down below if there's anything that you want me to read for a regular book review, um, if there's a series of books or anything that you want me to do beyond the book for. Um, I am in the process of working on one for next month of another childhood favorite film that's going to have multiples like this one. So if there's anything you'd like me to focus on for another uh, trio, let me know. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Doodles!